Series range of anamorphic lenses have been tested and raved about by many YouTubers, but I think everyone's been focused on the wrong one. I've extensively used and tested the full frame 50mm T2.9 anamorphic from Siri, and while I think it's an absolutely amazing lens, I think there's one that's so much better in their range and it costs less than half the price. So first of all, I just want to introduce to you guys the anamorphic lens that I'd recommend if you're looking into getting into anamorphic, and that is the Siri 35mm f1.8 Super 35 lens. And I know what you're thinking, oh no, it's only Super 35, why on earth would I spend my money on that trash? Well actually, it's not trash, there's actually a lot of really, really good reasons as to why shooting Super 35 is actually better for shooting anamorphic, and I'll get into all those in this video, but yeah, this is the lens I'll be talking about, and I'll be saying why I would actually choose this lens over a full frame version from Siri. So first and foremost, getting into the whole anamorphic topic, I think something that's really important to consider is actually your rolling shutter performance. And it's something that people don't normally talk about or associate with anamorphic lenses. But when I've shot anamorphic in the past, I was actually shocked at how much of an effect this has on your footage. So essentially, because you are squeezing your image, and um, what that means is that your rolling shutter is actually gonna become a lot more exaggerated. And for those that don't know what rolling shutter is, it's essentially where the uh, you know sensor readout doesn't happen you know fast enough. So you get this sort of wobbly jelloiness, so the lines that should look like this end up looking like this when you, you know, whip or pan your camera. Um, it's really ugly, it's really distracting, and it's definitely not something that you want to have in your footage. Um, and then the S5 II, if we're talking about rolling shutter performance, the S5 II's rolling shutter in full frame is around 22 milliseconds, which is not really industry leading, it's nothing to write home about. In fact, it's actually two milliseconds worse than the original S5. But when you come into APS-C, the rolling shutter performance becomes 14.3 milliseconds, which is a vast improvement. So that means essentially, because you're not having the full sensor of information to sort of read out in that time, you are gonna get a faster readout, of course. So therefore, the rolling shutter performance is much better. And that is reason number one why I'd actually recommend shooting Super 35 when you are shooting anamorphic. Secondly, the whole focal length and focal range thing when you shoot anamorphic kind of goes out the window. So when you think APS-C, normally you think, you know, a 1.5 times crop. So you think, oh, I'm shooting 35 millimeters, therefore my actual focal length, you know, a full frame equivalent would sort of turn into maybe something around the 50 millimeter mark. Well, that doesn't really happen with anamorphic lenses because you're actually gaining sort of real estate on the sides of the frame. So that actually means that shooting with a 35 millimeter anamorphic lens on the APS-C crop in the Lumix, the actual field of view you're getting is equivalent to 37 millimeters. So you're not actually getting too much sort of disparity between the actual focal length that's written on the lens and what you're actually shooting. But then when you take the 50mm T2.9 anamorphic lens from Siri, the actual field of view you're getting from that, you know, on the wide side is actually more around 35mm. And again, that is because you're sort of going back in focal range instead of going forward. So instead of getting more cropped in, you're gaining real estate, like I said, on the sides. So on to specifics about this lens in particular when comparing it to the full frame Siri lenses. Um, as you guys can see, it's a lot smaller and it is a lot lighter. Um, in fact, this lens actually weighs around 580 grams, and the 50mm T2.9 that I've used and tested, which is a full frame lens, that one is over a kilogram. So you're saving yourself about half the weight with this one, which makes it fantastic because for me personally, I don't like carrying loads of heavy lenses with me. I get tired, I'm lazy, I don't wanna carry loads of really, really heavy stuff. Um, and it actually meant that when I was using the full frame lens, I was thinking quite a lot about whether I'd actually use it on the shoot, and if I didn't, you know, if I couldn't justify bringing it along then it will just stay at home on the shelf whereas this one I can chuck in my bag and be like mm, I might use it I might not and if I don't use it I don't really care too much because it doesn't weigh an absolute ton um, also another really nice thing about this lens compared to the full frame one is the 67 millimeter filter thread size and I know you know some people might prefer bigger filters um, on their lenses uh, but it means that if you have invested in the Lumix S series primes they'll share the exact same filter thread size so if you have smaller uh, filters already 
then you're not going to need to go out and spend loads on bigger filters uh, like you would do with your full frame anamorphic lens because I think that that one's filter size is around 82 millimeters and again that's absolutely fine for someone like me because I've got 82 millimeter filters but if you don't and you have got smaller ones because all of your lenses are sort of 77 millimeters and under then it becomes another expense you have to pay out for which is really annoying and again talking about expenses this lens is less than half the price of that full frame lens so I think in dollars the full frame 50 millimeter t2.9 is around $1,300 whereas this one is about $550 so it's literally less than half the price again which means that you can essentially buy two lenses in this lineup for the same price that you could buy in the full frame lineup another downside to shooting APS-C that people normally always draw back to is the loss of light that's being taken in by the lens so of course it means because you are using a cropped sensor you're not going to be able to let as much light in and of course that makes sense it's just physics but this is a 35 millimeter f1.8 and then when you crop that by 1.5 times so the crop factor that f1.8 becomes more like a 2.7 um, and then the full frame lens is a t2.9 so we're basically getting the same amount of light coming into the sensor even with super 35 so there's not really much difference and then another massive plus of the Super 35 lens compared to the full frame is your actual focus throw. So the focus throw on this lens is 191.5 degrees, whereas on the full frame lens, it's 95 degrees. So this actually means that the focus throw is a lot longer. The distance to sort of acquire focus on this is a lot longer than the full frame one. And that's actually a really good thing when you're filming and pulling focus because you have more precise, more accurate sort of fine tuning of your focus. You can essentially, you know, be a lot more accurate with where you want to be focusing. And something that I actually found quite tricky about the full frame version was how hard it was to focus. Whereas this one is a lot easier for me. Um, and of course, when you're looking at the lens straight on, you can see that there are no teeth on this one, like there are the full frame ones. So that could be seen as a downside because of course you can't just go and attach your you know, focus puller or your servo focus motor as easy. But of course, what you can do with this is just attach one of those little rubber sort of you know, teeth rings, and then you're good to go. And what's actually nice as well is that if you did want to focus by hand, so manually focus by hand with this lens, then having no focus teeth is actually a lot nicer for that experience. So with this one, you sort of have the best of both worlds. And that's another reason why this one is one that I'd rather use than the full frame one. So to summarize this super 35 millimeter lens and the pluses, you're essentially getting a much lighter lens that's easy to carry around. You're getting a much more affordable lens because it's literally less than half the price. Um, in terms of the actual low light performance, it's gonna be very similar to the full frame counterpart again, because you know it's still acting like a T2.7. And um, 35 millimeters in anamorphic mode in super 35 is still only 37 millimeters. So you're not losing, you're like, sorry, you're not cropping too much into your image. And yeah, you just save yourself a heck ton of money. I mean, you can literally pick up two anamorphic lenses in this range for the same price as one of the full frame ones in the same Siri range. So why would you not get more lenses for the money instead of buying one lens, getting worse running shot performance and really not seeing too much improvement in image quality? And there's definitely a reason why in Hollywood and in cinema, they still like to use Super 35 most of the time over full frame because there are still definitive benefits to shooting Super 35 over full frame when you are shooting video. But yeah, anyway, um, guys, I make so many videos on this channel about L-mount lenses and the different ones you can get for the L-mount ecosystem. This channel is very heavily focused towards the Lumix um, sort of full frame lineup of cameras and stuff. So if that is your thing and you shoot Lumix, then you should definitely subscribe because there's a lot of videos on here that will help you get the most out of your camera. And yeah, you know, go check those out and hopefully I shall see you over there.